Whoa. Turn that shit back on. This is probably going to be too loud. Maybe I'll put it down there. Is that better? We'll find out. Oh, we're not doing that. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. What are we doing? Someone asked me a question. There we go. So, we're going to do some videos just now and then, nothing mental, um, which is an just engineering question. So, I'm going to call this thing engineering questions thing. Um, so this engineering questions thing is uh, rocket science. This comes from uh, questions that people send me. So some guy just said, you like doing engineering stuff, Matt, and blah, 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 blah. When people say it's not exactly rocket science, is it? Is it just a terminology from back in the day or is it really that difficult? <laughs> Good question. I do like this question. Um, oh, it's, it's, it's fucking silly hard. So we are not talk. Rocket science is not about. Um, it is not about orbital mechanics. So how to stick a rocket into orbit? How to determine? How to determine those orbits? How to stick a rocket on a trajectory? how to change the perihelion and all the rest of it, all of that stuff. It is not that. That's not what rocket science is, right? It's also not the fuel side of things because the fuel side of things is that's rocket chemistry. When people say rocket science, they literally mean sticking this thing on the tower like this, with some big fucking engines on it, right? It is this, this bit that's the hard bit. The reason why, in a nutshell, is that you are trying to plough a nail through the air. Let me, the best way to explain it, or to demonstrate it, would be with a drill bit. I don't want to see this very well. Fuck you, I don't need to use a drill bit. Just use a pen. So you've got a pen, and we are... Yeah, exactly. We are trying to push... <laughs> We're trying to push it up. Alright. We're trying to put a force through its centre of mass. And it's not centre of gravity, it's centre of mass. This is not the centre of all the gravity in the universe. Um... Oh, here we go, we've got an expanding foam can. We are trying to push through, we're trying to force through the centre of mass, and no matter how much I do it, it's going to wobble around. And this is base heavy, right? The worst thing is, is the rocket, <laughs> the rocket as she's setting off, it gets lighter. Now, you might think that's a good thing, but it's not a good thing, because it means everything is changing. Right, so as the rocket, it starts off with a centre of mass just say up there, and as she starts to lose fuel, its centre of mass is always moving. Right, closer to the, you know, your initial force down at the bottom, but it is constantly just moving. Not only that is the pressure outside. Yeah, Q Max and all the rest of it. The pressure outside is is falling. Right, it's, it's just falling away. So that's changing your your centre of pressure and your centre of mass relationships are just fucking going everywhere. There's also the nozzle geometry due to this pressure. Uh, pressure. No, just shape. Let's just put shape. Nozzle shape. Stuff like that. It's just fucking wibbly wobbly. And not only that. <laughs> We're talking masses of weight, right? We're talking masses of fucking force. You know, kilonewtons, meganewtons, quadrablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablablabl
we'll use this again. So the rocket body itself is under compression because you've got the air resistance on the top and the bottom is pushing it up. So she's under compression, not tension, which is kind of where we'd want it. And there actually was an idea. Um, there was an idea, and there has been an idea, especially when you get into space, to have the top of your rocket here, your nozzles here like this, and then have the rest of the spacecraft here like this and basically have the engines fire uh, fire, idiot wrong way okay, now how did I get that wrong, I just did it fire like this and have the whole rocket under tension, it's been pulled, you know what I mean it's been, it's been dragged along instead of being booted from the bottom and forced up so in other words, you're doing this like that, right, you're pulling the rocket up instead of firing it up from the bottom, right? And trying to steer these things, trying to, um, because you know, they don't go straight up, they go on a, a, a trajectory, they go on a, a parabolic arc. It <laughs> then also you have asparagus staging, so they call it asparagus staging, and this is where a rocket um, dumps, half of the rocket as she goes so she sets off here like this um, in three bits one two three and then it's two bits and we jettison off this bit and then she carries on and then she jettisons the last bit off and then fucks off into an orbit like so the reason why I do this, the reason why it's called asparagus staging is because that's how asparagus works I'll put a picture up of asparagus if you don't know what I'm talking about you know, little buds, each bit. And the reason why I do this is because think of the rocket sections, each section of the rocket, right, has an empty mass. So every single one of them has a little engine on it, like this. And then the rest of it, just say, pretty much apart from this bit, this is the crew at the top. This is fuel, this is fuel, and this is fuel. As you go through your fuel on stage one, once this is empty, there's no fuel in there, this still has a mass, just say, of four tonnes, right? So the rest of the rocket, if you just had no rockets, you would just be carrying fuel tank. But if we can shed this, we've just lost, yes, we've lost the heavy engine, but we've also lost the fuel tank. So we've just lost, just say, a tonne. And we do it again, you know, we've lost another tonne. So now we're minus two tonnes, where if it was just one giant rocket like this, we would be carrying them two extra tonnes. So it is more efficient to do this. It'd be like filling your car up with only half a tank or quarter of a tank and just leapfrogging from petrol station to petrol station. So this, that's gas station one, that's gas station two for you Americans. You know what I mean? It's like taking your fuel up there, don't need it. Taking your fuel up here, now we don't need it and carry on. Right? Get asparagus staging. If you play um, Kerbal Space Program, which is great fun, you get a very sense, that's just the basic physics, a sense of how difficult this thing is just to get the thing flying straight and where you want it to be. You know what I mean? It's a very good little program, is that? Uh, if you watch Scott Manley, he's got a really good thing where he talks about all this kind of stuff. Um, but any road, so, uh, engineering side of things is we have got to make something that separates. It's got a cowling, it's got another rocket motor on it, it's got another cowling, it's got another rocket engine on it, a little diddy rocket with a capsule on the end of it. And then we've got a big fucking rocket engine on the back of it like this. We've got to make sure that this thing it's light, it's just weight, it's weight, 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 All right, that's, this is number one, everything, if anyone is trying to make anything light, it is the rocket industry, forget everybody else with their magnesium bullshit, this, this is what it's all about, it's all about weight because it costs a ridiculous amount of money per kilo, right, we're getting down to kilograms of something that weighs hundreds of thousands of them, you know what I mean? So every kilogram counts, literally. So, 
You are trying to make something that is designed to break apart. Right? And it has to break apart in a non-violent, very precise way. Right? It has to break apart even though this engine up here weighs four tons. This engine up here weighs 2.5 tons. You know what I mean? So you've also got a tank that can weigh 100 to 500 tons, right? Of highly volatile fuel mix and air, right? But that's going to constantly change. So the pressure on these things is going to change. And they have helium bladder tanks and it just gets fucking mental and confusing. All of this has to be done lightweight. It all gets shaken to the living shit of, it gets compressed, it gets frozen, it gets squeezed, it gets banged, and then it goes into a vacuum. It's got to survive that, be lightweight. It is just mind blowing how fucking complicated these things are. For instance, from a, you know, a mechanical engineering point of view, you have, <laughs> it's really simple, you have a ball and a nozzle. Right, you have a ball and a nozzle, and then you have a pump here and a pump here, and then this is the feed, this is your oxygen, and let's just say this is kerosene. Yeah, kerosene, and then you put them into a mix chamber and ignite them. That's it. Yeah, this is a pump, this is a pump. Right, oxygen goes in, fuel goes in, they mix together, they do the okie and then you ignite them, and then they burn out. Right, like so. How can it be that fucking difficult? Oh, it is. Right, so, so number one is, when you do this, the first thing that's going to happen, right, is that your nozzle is going to melt. This nozzle... It's just going to fuck off. So what they do, like mad bastards, which is very clever and it works a treat, is you put cooling around the nozzle. We're all familiar with that. But we can't do that because we can't accept the weight penalty. Well, hang about, we've got a coolant. Fuck it. Let's just bring a pipe off here, a pipe off there. It wraps around the nozzle. Great. Let's pump the fuel through it. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, the fuel. So they basically pump the fuel around the nozzle to keep the nozzle cold. These pumps have to operate at stupid speeds. So how do you power these pumps? Well, there's no electric motor in the world that's going to do it. So what you do is you have a shaft. And you have turbos, basically. Turbos, right? So what you do is you take a bleed off here, off your main combustion engine cycle. So you burn a bit of fuel, it then powers up the turbos. The turbos are then literally, they, they're basically um, superchargers in a sense. They basically drive the pumps, right? And the Russians did a crazy idea where they try to feed the exhaust gases from these turbos back into the mixture and not use it and um, the Americans for a long time had a little exhaust pipe they used to stick out the side so that was how the turbos shut out but the Russians made this system where it goes back into and is actually used to thrust the engine instead of just waste in a sense um, and the Americans said that's all dangerous and it wasn't going to work and they tried it the Americans kept on blowing up and the Russians goes <laughs> we've been doing this for years you know what I mean that kind of shite um, bit of colonial racism there for you <laughs> and it's just insane right it's just everything is on the edge these turbos these turbines are on the edge the pumps are on the edge of what you can do because they've got to make them so light to then do their job at the same time it has to be reliable if it goes wrong well challenger happens you know what i mean it's just the extreme of everything this rocket is trying to be pushed from the bottom and it wants to do everything but <laughs> it wants to do everything but fly straight and a testament to that is how many failures in the early days of rocketry they were fuck me they were everywhere 
explosion after explosion after explosion because it's difficult extremely difficult so when people say well it's not rocket science or say it's as hard as rocket science it best be because rocket science is ridiculously difficult hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit